Seeing no further introductions, it's therefore time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. In November 2017, the Durham Community Legal Clinic and Durham College established a five-year pilot project to create an access to justice hub in the region of Durham. Speaker, through this new partnership, the clinic will expand to provide advice on provincial event offences and small claim matters. Further, the hub will create a free income tax clinic and work with the region of Durham to develop learning modules for the public service providers on how to access uh, benefits to local income residents. The Access to Justice Hub speaker will provide this assistance by combining the knowledge, resources and supervision of the Durham Community Legal Clinic with paralegal students from Durham College. Speaker, this type of program for paralegal students has never been offered in Ontario and is an innovative approach to training paralegals. Speaker, I want to recognize the great work of both the Durham Community Legal Clinic and Durham College for their partnership, which will be a great resource for many residents in the region of Durham. And thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on Friday, April 27th, the Cardiac Fitness Institute at London Health Sciences Centre will close its doors. After 30 years of helping Londoners to recover from cardiac events and, more importantly, to maintain their health, many of the CFI's 2,000 patients have credited Dr. Larry Patrick, the cardiologist who founded the program, with literally keeping them alive. Dr. Patrick understands the value of long-term cardiac maintenance following acute rehab care, whether that means participating in regular exercise programs or just coming in for annual checkups, monitoring and stress tests. The closure of the CS CFI has created huge anxiety for these 2,000 patients. Those who attended weekly CFI exercise classes will be referred to the Canadian Centre for Activity and Aging at Western, where CFI equ equipment will be moved. But the vast majority of the CFI patients, approximately 17 only saw Dr. Patrick once or twice a year. Many are still waiting to be connected to another cardiologist. They feel abandoned and are worried about their ongoing care. Speaker, this government claims to be committed to evidence-based decision-making. The CFI has 30 years of data, evidence that could be used to measure the impact of long-term cardiac rehab. I am once again calling on the Liberals to step in and stop the closure of the CFI, at least until the data has been analyzed. It may be that the $300,000 required for the CFI is the best investment government can make to keep cardiac patients alive. Thank Without you. the research, we will never... Thank you. Further member statements? The member is your... Well, thank you, Speaker. Toronto sports teams are on a roll. We are the reigning Grey Cup champions. We are the reigning MLS champions. And the Jays are now off to a fantastic start with a 12-5 record. And now, for the second time in 16 years, both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Raptors have made the playoffs in the same they're season. They're Toronto is buzzing as we cheer on DeRozan and Lowry of the Toronto Raptors and Matthews and the rest of the young guns from the Leafs. Not only has this brought tremendous energy and excitement to our great city, but their success has brought great economic benefits as well. And when it comes to sports fans, we know a few things. They like to watch the game live, they like to drink while they watch the game, and they like to eat while they watch the game. And with both the Toronto Raptors and the Maple Leafs in the playoffs, tourism is reaping the benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Tonight, as the Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Boston Bruins, thousands, thousands of sports fans will be congregating at local bars and down at Maple Leafs Square to cheer on the home team. I know which bar I will be watching the game in tonight. <laughs> During last year's playoff run, spending at bars near Air Canada Centre surged 64 percent, and spending at downtown bars increased 54 sure. percent. Revenue has the potential to make a restaurant's entire year. Speaker, I know this. On Tuesday, when the Toronto Raptors played the Washington Wizards, it was impossible to find a hotel room. Fortunately, Speaker, there's another city in Ontario that's not reaping all these benefits. But let's hope, Speaker, next year we'll all be able to join us in the playoff excitement for at least a round two. So tonight, go Leafs, go! Go Leafs, go! And let's go Raptors! Another member, status member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, early Wednesday morning, I was pleased to be able to get back to Halton Region to congratulate and thank officials from Wilfrid Laurier University and Conestoga College upon their plans to build a new, innovative academic center of excellence in the town of Milton. 
Laurier is considered to be one of Canada's top comprehensive universities and is considered to be the top university in the country in terms of student satisfaction. Conestoga's graduate employment and graduate satisfaction rates are consistently amongst the highest in Ontario. Their partnership will become a beacon. This is nothing less than the future of post-secondary education in Ontario. When completed, the new Milton Education Village will be a 400-acre, purpose-built, fully integrated neighbourhood located near the 401 and adjacent to the Niagara Escarpment. With a focus on the STEAM disciplines, meaning science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics, the new post-secondary campus is planned to eventually serve 2,000 students in the coming years. For my constituents in Wellington Halton Hills, it represents a new post-secondary learning option close to home, bringing together theory and practice and rethinking the way we train people, as was said at the event. This project has been in the works for many years, and I know you've supported it, Mr. Speaker. And successive councils and staff, the Town of Milton, as well as the Region of Halton, and the other community partners all deserve enormous credit for their commitment and vision. As a Laurier alumnus, as Waterloo Region MPP from 1999 to 2007, working with Conestoga College, and for the past decade a Halton MPP, I was glad to add my own voice in support of this proposal and express that support on the floor of the House. We all look forward with anticipation to its completion as together we embrace the promise of Ontario's future. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, I won't say anything about the prop that you held in your hand as a Laurier magazine because I'm an alumni too, so I thought maybe I'd just let that one slip. Further member statements, the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Foliette is an in incorporated community in the northwest corner of my riding. The town population is a little bit over 100. It was created during the construction of the CNR in 1912. They celebrated a 100th anniversary, and they are home to a family of albino moose. They're white. They're beautiful. It sits off Highway 101, midpoint between Timmins and Chaplow. It is over 100 kilometers in either direction to get to the closest pharmacy, funeral home, hospital, dentist, optometrist, high school, long-term care home, or 400 kilometers to drive to Sudbury, as none of those services exist in their community. It is a typical northern rural remote community. The government talks a good game about uh, their fair hydro plan for northern rural community. It's supposed to bring their bills down by 50 percent. Well. It's not true, Speaker. William and Shirley Vizina share their hydro bills with me. They pay $64 for electricity, $51 in delivery charges. Métis Association, just next door, pays $55 for electricity and $78 for delivery. The now privatized Hydro One decided to reclassify Foliette as a high density. Foliette embodies northern rural and remote, but not to Hydro One. This is wrong. The people of Foliat are being gouged. I think it's a parting insult to my constituents from the Liberal Party. The NDP intends to change this speaker, change it for the better. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, vibrant communities such as my in Trinity Spadina are made stronger when affordable space are available for the artists and cultural organizations. That is why I'm proud of this year's budget, because it shares the City of Toronto's interest in supporting our most cherished culture space like Fall Wind Richmond, Artscape, and many others alike. Mr. Speaker, our budget states the following, and I quote, The province will provide the City of Toronto with the authority to design and administer a new program to provide property tax reduction for up to 50% to qualifying facility that offers affordable space for the arts and culture sector. The city will have full discretion and to determine which culture facility will be eligible. Our city councillors have voted on this and it has passed and this will happen. We need to keep our arts and culture sector strong and well supported, Mr. Speaker. That is why I heard, I've, I've heard, that's what I've heard from residents and virtually all stakeholders involved in arts. Artists and community members alike in my writing ask us to save Fort Wayne Richmond, and our 2018 budget is doing exactly that. Thank you, Speaker. Wait, make it. Further member statements, the member from Niagara West Glenbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to bring recognition to the farmers who put food on the tables of Ontario's yeah, yeah. families. The life of a farmer is not an easy one. There are early mornings, late evenings, and all around long days spent in hard work 
planting, reaping, caring for livestock, bringing animals in from the field. Even with modern technological advancements in crop insurance, the weather can be unpredictable, as we've seen this year, as can your yield. In an age of uncertainty surrounding international free trade agreements and changing weather patterns that threaten traditional ways of farming, small-town farming communities in Ontario often struggle to make ends meet. As the son of a pork and poultry farmer myself, born and raised on a 100-acre farm in the heart of Niagara, I understand these struggles. I stand today on the behalf of the agricultural community across Niagara West, Glanbrook and Ontario, farmers who are frustrated that after 15 years of liberal waste, scandal and mismanagement in the province of Ontario, they pay more, get less and are neglected by a government that is too busy taking care of its uh, insider friends and fat cat elites to pay any attention to the plight of hardworking farmers and entrepreneurs. I'm proud to be part of a PC party that recognizes and celebrates the importance of rural Ontario and our farming communities. I wish to recognize all the hardworking farmers in my riding of Niagara West Glanbrook and thank them for their contributions. Farmers truly do feed cities, Mr. Speaker. I'm looking forward to change that works for the people that is coming soon. Further member statements. The member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. And I rise today to share that for the last two weeks, my constituency office has hosted artwork from local artist Isabel Mazata. Isabel is the art instructor for the Creative Arts Day program at Horizons for Youth, a fantastic organization and youth shelter in my riding of Davenport. This display is also very special because it showcases the work of several emerging artists at the Horizons for, Center, uh, for Youth Centre. Horizons for Youth believes in using a strength-based holistic approach, informed by best practices, which allows the youth to be an active member of the creation of content and concepts covered in the arts programming. At Horizons, youth continuously look forward to participating in the creative arts program, as the program provides them the opportunity to connect with their peers, fine-tune their artistic skills, and ultimately provides them a temporary escape to the current reality of living in the shelter system. One individual whom I had the distinct pleasure of meeting on the exhibit's opening night was a young entrepreneur named Joel Zola. A recent CBC article highlighted the fact that in 2014, Joel founded Street Voices, a magazine giving platform to marginalized voices, and he did this all the while he was homeless. Joel's success is truly inspirational and a shining example of the positive impacts that programs like Horizons for Youth have on the lives of young people in my community and across the city every day. This display will be in my office until the end of April, and I encourage everyone to stop by for a visit to see the amazing work of these amazing youth. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you for the I'm pleased to rise today to report the results of a survey, survey from my recent newsletter, and I want to thank everyone who participated and shared their thoughts. Mr. Speaker, my constituents are concerned about this government's wasteful spending. 92% told me they believe there is government waste that could be better spent on other services, including health care, services for seniors. The majority of respondents told me their health care hasn't improved in the last 10 years, and that's unacceptable. They also struggled with hydro increases that forced them to choose between paying their hydro bills and other necessities. Mr. Speaker, life for people in Ontario is more and more unaffordable while hydro executives are getting huge raises. Another area of concern that, that was raised often is the proposed landfill site and the risk to our drinking water. In my survey, 94% said they believe municipalities should have the say in the location of landfills. They believe local governments should have a voice on issues that directly affect their communities. And I agree. That's why I introduced Bill 16, Respecting Municipal Authority Over Landfills Act. The people of Oxford support their communities, not only by protecting their water, but by supporting small businesses, which is why 96% reported that they shop local. It's great to see so many people taking the time to support our local businesses. Again, I thank all my constituents who took the time to respond to my survey so I can continue to share their concerns with this legislature. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. Thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.